Welcome. Today we're going to make a knife. Yay. With a laser. Yay. We'll be testing Creality's 10 watt Falcon lasers capabilities on knife making materials. It'll be pitted against eight ounce leather, wood handle scales, and knife steel to see if we can use this 10 watt beast to fabricate a cool knife. Are lasers safe for you? Well, they create noxious and dangerous fumes as they burn materials. They can easily damage your eyes and skin, and they can even start fires. I'll definitely be using the safety glasses that accompany this unit. A quick word on the air assist modules commonly sold for these lasers. They clear smoke from the cutting area and increase both the cutting depth and definition of the laser and reduce burning and smoke residue on the material's surface immensely. Comparing the results from the last laser I tried without an air nozzle, to this laser, um, it's like night and day, so I wouldn't buy a laser without one. You need to put an air assist module into your budget when pricing these things. Like I said, I'll be wearing these included safety glasses at all times. The importance of the focusing chip cannot be overstated. You must adjust the laser up and down on its carriage to the prescribed distance from the material you're cutting or engraving for maximum effect. Good news, it only took me about 32 minutes, including the time spent watching the instructional video to put this together. It was quite easy. If I had to do it again, it would take about 10 minutes. There's just not much to it, which is a relief. For software, I'll be using the free laser GRBL as opposed to the paid light burn. The most common thing people want to know is will these lasers etch a maker's mark with a decent depth in hardened steel? So this is hardened 1084. Let's put my mark on there and see what we get. Now it takes four different passes and you have to sand off the oxidation between each pass. All in all, this took me about 25 minutes to do this etch. All right, so once the uh, mark is cleaned up, we're gonna apply some brass black and sand it clean. I think this is a great result. It's very deep, very clean, very crisp. I like it. Let's compare it to the electrochemical etcher I have, the Personalizer Plus. So the electrochemical etch is still a nice result, but it's not as deep and it looks a little ratty. That's because this particular stencil is quite old. Here's a picture of a stencil that I used when it was fresh a couple years ago on my um, metal sanding block. Much nicer, but still not as deep. The laser thinned out some of the lines on the logo, so I'll have to adjust the image by fattening up some of the lines, and then we'll reapply it to the final knife. Next, let's take on some 8-ounce leather. It will definitely engrave leather just fine, like the 5-watt laser I used in the last video about lasers, but I'd really like to know if it can cleanly cut 8-ounce leather and help us with some sheath making. And uh, what do those settings look like? I did a lot of testing with a lot of different results. This took me about a half a day to figure out. This is really something the 5-watt laser I tested couldn't do. The idea would be to sketch up a sheath and then parts of a sheath on a computer and then just laser them out of the leather. I want to know if we can even laser out the needle holes. That would be sort of cool. I hate leather working, guys. I know so little about it and I hate it. So uh, if this made that any easier, it might be a thing. So why didn't the laser go all the way through all parts of that image? So if we have the sample image of a square and we blow up the corner, it makes it a big fat line, the software does, and then it divides the line into a bunch of different laser passes like this. And you can set the laser passes to be vertical or horizontal or, or diagonal or whatever. And maybe there's less burning when it does that. The problem is with our image, our sheath, it doesn't cut everything equally. It runs a bunch of little vertical lines up here, and a bunch of little vertical lines down along the bottom. And so it cuts the top and bottom just fine. But on the sides where there's just a couple vertical lines next to each other, it doesn't cut. So you can divide this into two images maybe and cut the top and the bottom vertically and then load a second image with the sides and cut those horizontally with a bunch of stack lines like that. And maybe that'll work. Or there's another cutting method we can try. There's a center line method where it takes the corner here, we'll blow it up, and instead of putting a bunch of little lines next to each other, there's one single line, one single line. The question is, will that cause more burning on the surface? Will it go deep enough like that? We're gonna find out. 
So using a single pass worked pretty well, actually. It even cut the holes, you know, all the way through. There's a little bit of smoke staining on the leather, so I might have to work to figure that out, despite our masking, a little bit of schmutz got on there. But that's as far as I'm going with this, because the holes need to be cut a little bigger and a little further apart. And yeah, you can clean up the edges on a grinder just fine. What about wood? Does it cut wood? It would be awesome if it could cut out some handle scales. Somewhere on Creality's website, it talks about cutting 18 millimeter wood. So we got some of that to try. Now, this is plywood. It's not that dense. Mileage is going to vary depending on the wood and density and the amount of moisture and oil, I suppose. Anyway, let's see what happens here. This is our result on two different settings. The bottom cut got all the way through, but the top did not. As you can see, the top cut was a single center line cut with four passes and it didn't make it. The bottom, which was successful, was two different cutting styles, one after the other. First, a vectorized image was used with many small cuts vertically, like on the leather, and then two passes with a very slow center line cut, a single pass type of thing, and uh, that got through. A note on cutting wood, guys. Here's a fire that happened when I accidentally forgot a zero on the laser speed setting so that it was cutting at 10 millimeters per minute instead of 100 millimeters per minute, and I wasn't watching. I also made the mistake here of cutting this piece on top of another piece of wood instead of the honeycomb, which also contributed to this fire starting. It was basically like kindling. So you got to be careful. All right, with all the testing out of the way, it's time to make a knife. We'll use the laser to cut out and etch our handles a little bit later, but first, let's put some marks on our blade. Just like with the Afero 5 watt laser we tested, I'll have to do some things to make sure the blade of our knife is perpendicular to the laser at all points so that the laser is always in focus and etching appropriately. It's going to have to be tipped backwards towards its spine, and the tip has to come up a bit to do this. I'm lasering a design on one side and my maker's mark on the other. The design is large, so it's going to be etched at a shallower depth than the maker's mark. Otherwise, it would take about 20 hours. All right, that went really well. I'll show you the results later. Now onto my handles. Even though the knife handle is sized perfectly to fit the knife tang in Photoshop, you have to manually enter the size of the image in Laser GRBL, and this is complicated by the fact that there are borders on the image. After a little bit of trial and error, I find the correct size for this image in Laser GRBL. It's 121.5 millimeters. All right, now I've expanded all the sides of the knife handle as well in the drawing to account for material loss for burning uh, with the laser while keeping the fastener holes uh, right in place. Let's see how it goes. All right, good news, guys. We got that lasered out. It's nice and clean, right? Look at those edges. A quarter inch maple is just the thickness of our handles, and this is the handle material we're going to use. And I did some little test etching there in addition. Uh, it looks good, but we've got an order of operations problem because not only do I want to cut out the handle, but I also want to put a little engraving, a little design on the side with the laser. It has to be perfectly centered. Here's what I've settled on. I'm going to tape this in place, cut it out, and then carefully lift it out, drill it with the countersinks, then go in and contour it and sand it to 600 grit so it's almost finished. Then carefully drop it back in place without moving anything, load up the design image, and laser it out. There's so much that can go wrong there, but that's the only, uh, I think that's our only option. Let's give it a go. All right, so we've cut out the outline and it's nice and clean. Now we've got to lift this out take it, contour it, and then bring it back and laser our pattern on the side. Doing our countersinking here. Contouring. All right, so it's back into the frame about 20 minutes later where we're going to load up our images for the side of the handles and apply our pattern. The design on the side is going to be three different images that overlay each other and are all lasered in with different settings because I spent an entire day of experimenting to find out what worked best because the elements have different images like this fish scale background that's going to be lasered in with a center line mode. So a single thin laser line noted by the red lines here 
Next, we're going to do the border, which will be applied with line-to-line -line tracing, which will create a wider, thicker etching. And finally, the squid, which will be center line again, but with different laser speed settings than the fish scale. So that's three different images we have to load in laser. By the way, the designs I'm lasering are not original artwork. Um, I did piece everything together and arrange them, but the fish scales, the kraken on the side of the blade, those are licensed images. I couldn't figure out how to license the squid on the side of the handles. If anyone knows where to find and license that image, let me know. Well, believe it or not, that went off without a hitch for both handles, first time. I've got them sanded and cleaned up a little bit here, and then we're going to apply some Danish oil. I put some dark walnut Danish oil in the middle, and around the sides I'm going to use sort of a lighter color so we get a sort of differential effect. I also want a little bit of a difference in luster, so I'm going to put some uh, Starbond CA glue here in the middle portion only. I didn't think out the handle fasteners very well. I didn't have any 3 16th inch rod to go with the 3 16th inch holes, but I did have the Corby bolts, so we just used those, and we left them a little bit proud, which, you know what, it's a happy accident. I actually like it quite a bit. Maker's mark came out really nice after I fattened up some of the lines. Now, this pattern on the back came right up to the edge, and it actually burned the edge about a millimeter in all up and down here. So I had to grind away about a millimeter, maybe a millimeter and a half of the edge and resharpen everything and, and do all that because there were burn marks. There's these brown and black little burn marks up and down. So be mindful of that if you're planning something similar. Well, obviously this video was sponsored by Creality. So overall, I'm impressed with their tool. This little 10 watt laser can do a lot. It's way more powerful than the five watt laser I've tested in the past. It applies a really desirable maker's mark, and I've just sort of scratched the surface with using it for handle scales. It cuts 8-ounce leather. You'll have to decide if that's useful to you. I'm not really a leather worker, but it looks useful. At this time, it's $394 before the air assist, but guess what? The Personalizer Plus costs $325 these days, and it only does one thing. So I'd love to hear your ideas on what else you can do with this laser as far as knife making. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Now let's take a look at our knife. You know, I could have softened the edges of the handles a bit, but I sort of like them crisp for some reason. As you can see, some of the sides still have a little bit of laser burn on them. I'll have to blow up the handle scale drawing another millimeter or two next time. But I really like this knife, y'all. You guys have a good one.